Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, write a vector in component form when just given the initial and the terminal point. So rather than writing the initial and terminal point for every single one, um, I wrote the initial point first and then the terminal point second. Now, to kind of understand what we're doing, I think it uh, makes sense to first sketch the first vector and then for the other ones I'll kind of write the formula and then kind of do it a little bit quicker. But first of all, Let's, uh, let's have a conversation here. And first of all, remember what component form, what we're trying to do here. So component form, remember, a vector v is, has components vector 1 and v2. right? And it has that directed line segment. So basically, if you remember when we were sketching a vector in component form, basically these were kind of like x and y coordinates. And remember, it always had an initial point, 0, 0. And then it would just go to its point. And that end point was kind of like was a coordinate point, v1, v2. But remember, this was a, a vector, not a point. So we're writing a directed line segment from initial point to our terminal point. And then that was the name of our vector. And that's how we wrote it in there. All right. But that was component form. We liked component form because it started at 0. And it, it just goes to its, you know, to that point, which is our two components. Um, however, in this case, we don't have an initial point at 0, 0. And you know, our terminal point, it might not be the same terminal point that we have. So what we're going to do is let's kind of sketch what this graph looks like, or sketch, these, sketch this vector. So my vector's at negative 2, negative 2. So 1, 2, 1, 2. So that's my first point. And I'll call that the initial point. And then my terminal point is at 6, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2. And that's my terminal point. Okay, And you can see here. My vector is going to look something like that. Now, the purpose of writing something in component form is that, first of all, component form is much simpler. We just have a, you know, our slanted parentheses, and we have component one and component two. So it's very, very nice, right? Um, so basically, what we want to do to be able to um, <clears throat> uh, to be able to do that is um, what am I trying to think? Oh, yeah, and, and plus it just has those two parentheses. And it starts, it has an initial point at 0, 0, and a terminal point at uh, the vertex. It's much easier to find the magnitude. That's what I was thinking of. We, it's much easier to find the magnitude here than to try to find the magnitude over here. Because then you'd have to sketch each and every vector, right? And then do the Pythagorean theorem and so forth, or uh, distance formula. But <clears throat> in this case, we already know that, it, you know, that uh, the vector is here. We can just square these like we did in our last video, square the square v1, v2, and then add them, and then take the square root of it, and that's our magnitude, which is the same process, just a little bit easier to look at. So what we need to do here is we need to find, figure out what is v1 and what is v2. So remember, basically, v1, if we were going to kind of create a triangle here in this one, actually, I'll just do it because I'm going to erase this. We could basically say that from here to here is v1, and from here to here is v2, right? So basically, what we want to be able to do is we want to find the change horizontally and the change vertically of our points. Now, we're going to be looking into a formula. So when looking into a formula, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to organize these points. I'm going to call this x1, and I'm going to call this y1. I'm going to call this x2, and I'm going to call this y2. Okay. So if you look at this, you know, this point, basically what we want to do is say, how far did we travel from x1 to x2? Well, to find the change, what we need to do is determine the difference. So what we can say is v1 is going to equal the difference of <coughs> our terminal, our x-coordinate in our terminal, minus <coughs> the x-coordinate in the initial. And I can say that v2, then, is going to be the change uh, vertically, which is going to be the change <coughs> Sorry. How did I change from my terminal, the y coordinate in my terminal to the y value in my initial? So therefore, that's going to be y2 minus y1. Okay? So the component form of a vector looks like this. So we could basically say this is x2 minus x1, comma, y2 minus y1 which is equal to v1 comma v2. OK? So now all we need to do in this, in this vector to write the component form is we just need to find the difference of these two. So I'll go back to this. x2 is equal to 6. 
x1 is equal to negative 2. I'm going to put that in parentheses so I don't mess up my signs. y2 is 2. And y1 is negative 2. Okay. Now we just need to do a little math. 6 minus negative 2 is 8. 2 minus negative 2 is 4. Now what's nice about this is let's go ahead and graph this component form. The reason why I wanted to do at least one sketch is for you to visualize um, what this vector looks like compared to my initial vector. So we go to 8, 8, 4. So from now, remember this is in component form, so that means it starts at 0, 0. And then I'm going to go over 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And what I want you guys to kind of notice is, I don't really need these anymore. But look at the, look at the original vector that we had. Terminal point right here. Look at the original vector that we have. And now look at the vector when it's written in component form. Hopefully you've noticed that it's the exact same vector. I mean, you can see that, I mean, I, I'm not perfect. I don't have great graph paper up here. But you can see, I mean, the slopes look just about the same, right? They're supposed to be exactly the same. And the magnitude, the length from the initial point to the terminal point, is exactly the same. So what component form does, it just simplifies it. It, it gives us kind of like a, ba uh, a baseline for us using our vectors. Rather than having vectors all over the coordinate space, if we write them in component form, we know the initial point's always going to be at 0. And then it's just going to go to its terminal point. And the magnitude is going to be exactly the same than what we were originally given. So that's kind of the importance of component form. And it's really just as basic as using this formula. So what I'm going to do for the rest of the vectors, rather than sketching them and kind of showing you how they're all the same, we're just going to kind of work through uh, finding, uh, finding the vector in component form. So in this one, I'll just do, remember, it's x2 minus x1 comma y2 minus y1. And you can think of this again if you kind of remember. This is the same thing as the distance formula, which if you were given these two vectors um, like this, you could just use the distance formula if you had to find the magnitude. Um, you know, you can see that, hey, how to find the distance between these two vectors? Yeah, x1, x2, distance between the two points, I'm sorry, you could use the distance formula. Well, basically, that's exactly what we're doing. You know, these are part of the distance formula, x2 minus x1. You're finding the change in the x-coordinates and the change in the y-coordinates. All right, so before I do all that, I always like to label my coordinates. OK, so what I have here is negative 7 minus negative 1. Whenever I'm subtracting the negative, I always like to put it in parentheses so I don't make the mistake. Then I have negative 7 minus 7. OK, so negative 7 minus a negative. So minus a negative is plus. So negative 7 plus 1 is going to give me negative 6. Negative 7 minus 7. So if you owe $7 and you borrow 7 more, now you're going to owe 14. OK, and that is simply my component form. Done. All right, let's get into the next one. Again, let's just go ahead and label them because we don't want to make mistakes. And I, just like you, are very prone to making simple mistakes. So that's why I like to label everything before I get started. So this is negative 6 uh, minus 2 comma 6 minus negative 5. So negative 6 minus 2. So if you owe $6 and you borrow 2 more, that's going to be a negative 8. If you 6 minus a negative minus a negative is the same thing as adding, so that's going to be 11. All right, last one. Uh, so let's lay the x1, x2, y1, y2. So therefore, we have 6 minus a negative 3, comma, 4 minus 4. So 6 minus a negative 3, again, is going to leave me with 9. 4 minus 4 is 0. And there you go. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you take um, an initial point and a terminal point and write them as a vector in component form. Thanks. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to add one thing. If you wanted to write these uh, as a linear combination, just think of this as i, and that is j. So we could say 8i plus 4j, negative 6i minus 14j, 9i plus 0j, which is just 9i. I didn't have to do this, and I just figured I would do this for you. There you go. Just another way to write your vectors as linear combinations, if that was a problem that ever came up.